get things started. Hey guys, how to be here. So it took a little while, you know, distractions and all that, but I finally got Fire Emblem Path of Radiance done and out of the way. Now, was it worth the headache and enduring of some scary prices on eBay? Well, let's take a look at it today. Now, the thing about this review is that much like my Blazing Sword review, this one isn't really going to be quite as long as the Radiant Dawn one. If you want to get like the full experience of what these two games are kind of like, since they're so similar to each other, it's best to kind of watch that one first, especially, and then go into this game if you want to kind of get the full gist of what Path of Radiance is like. But regardless of how it's going to go, today I'm looking at Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. So Fire Emblem Path of Radiance stars Ike, a young man who's part of a mercenary group run by his father, Grail, in the country of Crimea. The Grail mercenaries do some odd jobs, but other than that, life seems pretty tame, until one day, the neighboring country of Dayan invades Crimea. Completely stunned and taken aback, the entirety of the royal family is slaughtered by Dayan's king, known as Mad King Ashnard. That is, except for one member of the royal family, a daughter kept hidden from the public named Alincia. She escapes the carnage and comes across the Grail mercenaries, whom she enlists to escort her to the safety of the neighboring country of Gallia, home to the beast-like race called the Lagoos, as she tries to figure out why Dan would invade, and to figure out a way to take back her homeland. So structurally speaking, I found that both the Atelier's games kind of had some better stories to tell than the vast majority of the other Fire Emblem games in the series. Now, with that being said, I found that Radiant Dawn was the better of the two. There, there, was, there was more complexity to the story, there was better conflict, and you had like multiple points of view going throughout it all, which made the story really interesting and very engaging. This one, not so much. I find the characters to be a little bit better though, since they actually brought back proper supports, just like how they were introduced in the GBA games. Have a character work close to someone on their support list, and you'll eventually improve their relationship, garnering better stats when near each other, as well as gaining new conversations outside of battle, albeit only 5 times per save, which still sucks now like it did in the GBA games. But I do appreciate figuring out more about what a character is like more consistently rather than sporadic clips that might happen like with Radiant Dawn. Obviously, since the game came out on older hardware, the game isn't overly impressive looking. Where I would have compared Radiant Dawn to Echoes and how well it looked, Path of Radiance is a little bit lower. If anything, I almost preferred the pixel-based graphics from the GBA games more. Mostly since combat feels more, more stiff than others, and yet it also feels like it takes longer. That and the GBA games feel like there's more personality to the animations. It also sucks since the battle forecast isn't present in combat which blows when entering an encounter on the enemy phase and having no sweet clue what anyone's potential against each other is like. That's not to say that that made this game hard or anything. <laughs> Far from it. In fact, this game is miles easier than Radiant Dawn. Partially because you're not jumping between different armies all the time, you're just with one set team straight through, giving you more time with them. And the other reason being is that the complexity of the map design and objectives aren't quite as interesting, I suppose. Most maps, especially in, in the late game, usually consist of either routing the enemies or just killing the boss. You would think that having more dedicated time on my units would help with how they performed. And yet, going into the final battle, only the ones I brought to the fight minus like a few of them were of any major use to me and even then it wasn't that many. Master Seals weren't implemented in the game, so units needed to reach level 20 in order to rank up. Bonus experience is also here to remedy that a little, and I find its implementation is slightly better, but as you get deeper in the game, I found it really hard to have what I sort of considered my endgame squad. I only had like a few units, like Nephany and Astrid, that were just completely overpowered that weren't Ike. In between battles, you get constant access to shops in the forge for one-time use per intermission as well. 
Units inventories is slightly different though, with 8 total slots, 4 for weapons and 4 for items and equipment. That never really felt like a problem to me though, since I found most of my units had ample room to mix different kinds of weapons as well as having lots of space to basically heal themselves. Now most units behave the same as they do later, or I guess even before, with one big exception. Lagoos suck in this game. Radiant Dawn handled them way better. Here, Lagoo's transformation meter charges and decrease based on the turn, rather than by the encounter. That doesn't sound so bad, but the problem comes in the forceful nature of the transformation. When their meter is filled, they immediately transform and can't revert back until it runs out, forcing you to use them on the game's discretion rather than your own. They also can't counter when not transformed, so they're completely useless until they are transformed, unless you want to use them as a wall. Thieves also suck since daggers don't have a weapon proficiency slot, so while sure I could have used Volk early on and maybe have had more success with a thief, I wanted to use Soth and well it sucked. To start with he was already a trainee unit so he was already at a disadvantage, but daggers do such little damage and I had to rely on Soth having good strength in order to get any sort of advantage out of him and that, that wasn't happening for me. Some magic units can also inherit the ability to use daggers upon promotion to give them a physical attacking option. It isn't really the best thing though since most don't really have good strength growth anyways. The final really bad thing, something that really bugged me, you can't swap out skills in this game. Units have a personal skill linked to them, but you can also pick up newer ones to equip on the battlefield. Think carefully as to whom you want to put these new ones on because you can't remove it without completely losing the skill. It was aggravating. And so that's Fire Emblem Path of Radiance compared alongside with Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Now, it's a great game for sure, but to be honest, it's not really worth the amount of headache and prices that I'm finding on eBay. It's not really worth it. I'm kind of happy to have it since I'm more of a fan of physical media collecting, but comparatively alongside Radiant Dawn, Radiant Dawn is way better. It improves on so many of the features that Path of Radiance introduced, and sure, it is a direct sequel and all but even then it's a really really good game and even compared alongside some of the gba games that i played i don't think path of radiance is quite as good i'm more likely to go back and play sacred stones or even blazing sword over path of radiance again to be honest it's just unfortunate i guess it's it was hyped up so much and i was ready for an exciting game and i kind of got one just not one that I'm going to be going back to anytime soon. But anywho, thank you all so much for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click right up here to check out some of my other videos that I've done. Or, if you really feel like it, you can click right up here to subscribe. And until next time guys, I will see you all later.